Hey guys, welcome back to another Surgical Tech Tips. Today's video is all going to be about malignant hyperthermia. It's a scary situation that can happen in the OR if you have an MH patient on the table. Uh, my hospital went through a dry run, a kind of like mock MH event, and I was able to record a lot of it, so I'm here to share it with you guys. Stay tuned. First things first, what is malignant hypothermia? MH is a rare inherited musculoskeletal syndrome that presents as a hypermetabolic reaction triggered by the exposure to certain anesthetic gases. These are all anesthetic gases that are used in general anesthesia cases in the OR like desflurane, enflurane, halothane, sevoflurane, and it also can be related to uh, the depolarizing muscle relaxant succinylcholine. So inside the operating room, on induction of a patient, what are some of the first signs that we might see on one of these MH patients? Number one, the masseter muscle contraction. This is the muscle that controls your jaw, your jaw muscle. A, on you know induction and maybe pushing succinylcholine, which is a muscle relaxant, you might see contraction of the jaw muscle, which may clamp down on like the ET tube possibility. There can be an unexplained tachycardia, which basically just means a really, really fast heart rate. Muscle rigidity uh, just across the body, not just the masseter muscle, but across the body you, you may see muscle rigidity. And then later on, as symptoms go on, you might see a fever and a high, high temperature, uh, body temperature in that patient. Now as far as treatment goes, the only known antidote to an MH patient in an event like this is the administration of dantrolene. Stopping all triggering agents, which could be all the anesthetic gases that they're using or succinylcholine muscle relaxants, and any supportive therapy to help reverse the hyperthermia, the acidosis, and possibly organ dysfunction that may be happening at, uh, as a result of this, this MH event. Now that we know what malignant hyperthermia is, we know its signs on induction. We know the immediate treatment that needs to be taken. Now let's go through each role in the OR during an event and what each role of the person inside the OR needs to be doing. The anesthesia provider will confirm the MH crisis, call the code, stop any triggering agents and anesthetic gases, hyperventilate the patient with 100% oxygen, Administer any antiarrhythmic medications to get that blood pressure back down if the patient's getting a little tacky. Monitor the patient's core temperature and initiate cooling measures for any temps that go above normal. Monitor renal functions, obtain blood gases, and treat any hyperkalemia if it's present. The anesthesia tech will assist the anesthesia provider with the placement of additional IV or arterial lines and also assist the anesthesia provider with additional duties regarding any patient treatment. For the circulating RN in the room, when that anesthesiologist calls the MH code, notify the charge nurse at the front desk and call for extra help. Immediately call the MH hotline and put the call on speakerphone if possible. Report each vial of dantrolene administered to the recorder. The surgeon. Complete or stop the surgical procedure Irrigate the wound with cold saline under direction of the anesthesia provider. Assist with the placement of IV, A lines, or central venous lines, if asked. The surgical tech. Assist the surgeon with the completion of the surgical procedure or assist the surgeon with irrigating the wound with cold saline under the direction of the anesthesia provider. A second RN in the room, upon arrival in the room, needs to begin assisting with the administration and mixing of dantrolene. A third RN in the room needs to place ice on the patient's groin, neck, and axilla bilaterally upon receiving ice bags. Upon request from the anesthesia provider, obtain insulin from the Pyxis, insert a Foley if needed, and you can do cold lavage through the Foley as well to help cool down that patient, and insert a rectal tube if instructed by the anesthesia provider. A runner for the room, can be an OR tech or a nurse, needs to obtain ice bags 
from the ice machines in, your, in the facility. Obtain two bags of cold saline from the refrigerator in the sterile core and run for any other supplies as needed. Deliver any specimens to the lab if needed as well. A recorder for a fourth RN needs to record the MH event. Communicate with all team members to obtain information. And the charge nurse. Upon immediately receiving notification that there is an MH crisis happening, they need to assign roles to three RNs, an anesthesia tech, and an OR tech to go into those rooms and fulfill all the other roles needed. The charge nurse will help bring the MH card into the operating room and assist the circulating RN with calculating any of the dantrolene doses. Now it's well documented that if dantrolene is given within 10 minutes of the MH event, that outcomes are greatly, greatly increased. Now if you're ever training at your facility for an MH event, as a team, focus more on the things that you need and where they're located rather than physically helping the patient. Knowing where the malignant hypothermia card is, knowing the quickest way to get a few bags of ice, knowing the fastest way to start reconstituting that dantrolene to get it into the patient as quickly as possible, and also knowing what the MHAUS hotline is so you can call them and they can be on the phone with you and take you step by step for any, anything that happens during an event like this. I hope you guys appreciated the video and it gave you a little insight into the potential malignant hypothermia patient and event. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you give it a share and a like and I'll see you guys again in the next video. Bye. I think we have an MH yes. code here. Can you call an MH code? Yes. We need some help. All right, first, can you stop the surgery as soon as you can? We need to treat this patient. Stopping surgery. Stop all triggering agents. Hyperventilate with 100% oxygen at 10 liters per foot. Hi, what are you doing? I'm, I'm calling image crisis line. On speaker. Carissa, can you calculate the new mix for? Yes, the this patient weighs 75 kilos and we need to start treating We're at the MH um, situation right now, room 7. All available help. Thank you. Can we irrigate the one we called saline, please? You mix five emails with sterile water for injection. I don't think they're really Do you need help with putting eight lamps off the deck? Uh, it is. It is. Great, so you need any help? Call Taylor. Cool. Thank you. We have the image. How they're, they have they're on the hotline. They're on the phone. We're on the speaker phone. So everybody can talk. Yeah, no, Anastasia has a vial. We have someone who, who can run blood gases and labs down. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Who's been the recorder? I'll go ahead and start recording. How about, I don't see the saline. We got the saline. I already gave the anesthesia. Okay, Two bags. Okay. 
we've got another nurse over here at our emergency part and like in case we need to do right the dads are around the electrodes are on we're all set we don't have a foley we need a foley in so we can measure core temperatures all right john you want to grab a foley too i'll grab this one We also have, uh, just so you know, we've got some sodium bicarb, lidocaine, calcium chloride. So if you, um, mm -hmm, yep. So if we deplete what you have, we have extras here on the card. Insulin. Uh, insulin we'd have to get from the fridge, so we'd have to send a nurse to the Pixis, one of the Pixis Thank machines, you. to get that. We have antiarrhythmics, lidocaine, and um, we have lidocaine, um, amniodarone. We have furosemide. Calcium. We have yes. calcium, sodium bicarb. Dextra. So that would be another one that we would need to. So, okay. Great job, you guys. Good job. I'm, I'm happy the only one clapping. Come on. <laughs> Oh, serious. Oh, serious.